United States. Uh, a couple of things I have to observe uh, regarding your statement. Number one, the majority of, of Germans in Germany were not Nazis. The majority of Russians uh, were not communists, and yet the communists dominated, and yet, the dom uh, and yet in Germany the Nazis dominated. We always had a small militant group that controls what happens in a nation. So the fact that only a certain percentage of Muslims go to a mosque does not impress me that much if those certain percentage are militant, have an idea and a mission, and they're performing it. Now we know through studies that three out of four mosques in the United States are controlled by those who are anti-West, anti-American, anti-Israel. And they're getting their money from Saudi Arabia and other places. That's where those imams are trained. But before I start, I want to say something about Dave Ajima, a fighter. Now, you know, the, the press release that was initially uh, developed had a quote from Mr. Ajima. And it said, uh, millions have fled persecution from oppressive regimes to come to America whose bulwark of freedom is our Constitution. Then the next line. Do we want to remain America or do we want to be like Saudi Arabia, China, or Iran? That line. You know what? The Legislative Communications Department said he had to take out that line. He had to take out that line, do we want to remain America, or do we want to be like Saudi Arabia, China, or Iran? Why? Now, as Dave mentioned, uh, I'm the President and Chief Counsel of the Thomas More Law Center. But my talk to you today is a personal talk, and I'll tell you why. And I'm not representing the Thomas More Law Center today, I'm representing Richard Thompson. And there's an emotional reason for me to be here today. <clears throat> I have one son, his second year at West Point. I've got a second son that's ready to start at West Point. And my son at West Point says, every couple of days during their dinner, they get an announcement that another cadet has died in Afghanistan or Iraq, defending a constitution that says Sharia law will be the law of the land. Sharia law that destroys every uh, non-Muslim religion in its sight. You either have to convert, you have to pay the jiza, or your neck is chopped off. A few years ago, out of curiosity, we did a Freedom of Information Act request to the Justice, uh, to the Department of Defense. We wanted to know how many Christians had died in Iraq? Their response back was, according to self-identification, at least 67% of the military that died defending Sharia law and the Constitution that embodies Sharia law were Christians. And yet, here in America, we are afraid to stand up for the Constitution of the United States. What's on my heart is this. What's on my heart is this. A day ago, two days ago, because I have a son at West Point, I got this email. It is with sadness that I report the creation of a eulogy page for our second lieutenant, David E. Rylander, USMA class of 2011, last year. Second Lieutenant Rylander died on 2nd May in Logar province in Afghanistan of injuries sustained when insurgents attacked his unit with an improvised explosive device. And it goes on. You know, who 
told Dave that you couldn't put this one phrase in a press release that we do not want, uh, we, do we want to remain America or do we want to be like Saudi Arabia, China, or Iran <clears throat> when American soldiers are dying to protect the Constitution of the United States and in fact dying to protect the Sharia law constitutions in Iraq and Afghanistan. Je Thomas Jefferson once said, if a nation expects to be ignorant and free, it expects what never was and what never will be. And so we have to be informed, and I'm glad that you're all here to talk about uh, and listen <laughs> about Sharia law. We have a lot to be a proud, of, proud of. 235 years ago, with the Declaration of Independence, we announced our freedom from the clutches of a foreign power. Without a standing army or a standing navy, we challenged and defeated the most powerful military nation at that time, Great Britain. A few years later, we established the Constitution. From Lexington Green to Valley Forge, Americans died so this nation could be established under Judeo-Christian principles. We have defeated evil in World War I, World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, and now we're fighting in Iraq and Afghanistan. Our brave women, men and women have died to defend our nation and the fundamental human rights embodied in our Constitution. Yet today, a time when the Constitution is under attack from within, most of our political leaders are too busy to get involved. You know? And thank you, Dave, for getting involved. And thank you. I don't know if there's a representative from the governor's office, but I'm pleased that there is a representative from our Attorney General, Bill Schuette. And he took enough time to memorize the greeting in Arabic. Okay, and he said that. He, I saw the video. Next, this year probably he's going to have his wife dress up in a hijab so he can uh, again reach out to the Muslim community. What about Americans? Now, state legislatures have a, an important role to play in preserving our constitutional rights and fundamental values of freedom and liberty. That's why it's so important for us to get involved and pass House Bill 4769. It's a proactive measure that bans the use of foreign laws, including Sharia law. It's not focused on Sharia law. And I, as Bill uh, Wagner, Professor Wagner said, there's all this transnational stuff that's coming down through treaties with the International Criminal Courts, which will criminalize soldiers who will be taken away and tried as war criminals, including senators and legislators that vote for war without the approval of the United Nations. There's a laws that deal with child custody and child welfare. There are laws that deal with banning of, gun, uh, of guns, assault weapons. We are giving up our Constitution to a foreign nation, and I think it's time we got rid of the United Nations. We don't need it. alliances with organizations. But to have this group sitting there day in and day out plotting how they are going to destroy our sovereignty, oh, we are stupid if we allow that to happen. Stupid. You know, you heard that, you saw that, where said, well, there's not been no, um, there's been no uh, attempt to impose Sharia law in the United States. You know, well, there was a New Jersey case where a uh, guy, a husband, 
a Muslim, beat his wife and sexually assaulted her because he said, under Islamic law, whenever I have, want sex with you, you have to give it to me. She went to court to try to get a restraining order. The trial judge said, wait a minute, he's a Muslim, and according to his laws, that's correct. Anytime he wants sexual, uh, sexual favors from you, you have to get it and give it to him. That was the law until it got up to a, a, an appellate court and they got some sense and they said, wait a minute, that's not true. Okay. But that was a case where in the lower courts, they did impose Sharia law. And maybe if they had a law like we have uh, now in, in effect, that judge would have thought twice before doing that. But then there's this case in uh, Pennsylvania, just recently got onto the internet. There was a Halloween parade last year, and there was a guy that was dressed up uh, like a Mohammed zombie, walking in the parade next to the person that was dressed up like a Jesus zombie. And a Muslim saw the Mohammed zombie and went out of his way, got into the parade, and attacked him and beat him. The police were there and they took the reports. It got to court, and the judge said, well, you know, you insulted Mohammed. That's blasphemy under Islamic law. He had no criminal intent, so he dismissed the case. Sharia law in New Jersey. Maybe if they had that law, our law that we're talking about, uh, 4769, is it? 4769, the judge would have thought twice before he did that. And then we come to Michigan, Michigan Court of Appeals. The case of Tarconda versus Pinjari. This is a case between a wife and a husband who are Muslim citizens of India. They got married in India in 2001. They resided in Michigan from 2006 to 2008. Then the husband moved to New Jersey, and now comes the Sharia law aspect. It's called the triple, triple talaq. And that is a husband can say, I divorce you three times, and there's a divorce. So the husband goes back to India, and he does the triple tie, like I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you. He's divorced. The woman is never notified about what's happening. She's in Michigan. So she files a lawsuit in Michigan for a divorce and child custody. It gets to the circuit court, and the circuit court judge says, wait a minute. Your husband has already gotten a divorce from, uh, from you through the triple talaq. Therefore, I'm dismissing your case. And the case was dismissed. Luckily, it went up to the uh, Michigan Court of Appeals, and they said, wait a minute. This violates due process. This woman was not even aware of the loss of the, the, the talaq in India. With this law in effect, that judge would have realized that violation of notice provisions and uh, are violations of due process, constitutional right, and would not have allowed it. And there are, I could go on and on where uh, laws are being perverted, or court decisions are perverting American law for the benefit of Islamic law. It's interesting that the main opposition to um, is uh, to 40, uh, 4769 comes from uh, CARE. Dawood Mahabali. This is the same guy that about a, two weeks ago said, file the lawsuit against the FBI and Homeland Security on the basis of what? They violated the American Constitution. Okay? They don't have any problem using the American Constitution. Now, I want to just say a little di divergence here. Because Dawood Walid is a guy that's taken you on. He's called you all kinds of names. All kinds of names. I applaud you for standing up. Too many politicians today. One American soldier for dying facing bullets, bombs, IEDs. American politicians are afraid 
of being called bigot or intolerant or KKK. It doesn't register. Now, just recently, the Thomas More Law Center filed a lawsuit. Dave Adrian is involved in it, and there are two other individuals in this room who are involved in it. Bill Sage, stand up. Beth Griffin, stand up. And Beth Griffin are, um, have an have a, uh, initiative going to uh, enable or to uh, force public schools to have a class on the American Constitution. Yeah. Okay. Again, Bill, uh, it's 4520. Again, it's Dave Ajima's bill. Okay. Remember that. Is that 5240? Oh, 5240, okay. Now, here's what happens. A month before, Bill Sage goes to the Allegan Public School principal and says, I want to rent an auditorium. This is what we're going to do. And the public the school principal says, fine. And uh, they sign a contract. Bill pays uh, $90 for the, uh, for the auditorium use. It was going to occur between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. at the Allegan High School. Ten days before the event, he goes to the chief of police. He says, we're going to have this. I'd like to have a police officer uh, present. <laughs> One of the speakers we're going to have is Kamal Salim. Yeah. Kamal Salim, an Islamic terrorist converted to Christianity. Okay. Yeah. Everything is fine. Then all at once, Dawood Walid gets involved. Okay, he sends a letter to the um, public school principal and the um, superintendent of the school. And I've got the letter here someplace. But, the, but he basically says, hey, uh, oh, here it is. Um, on care letterhead, it has come to our attention that on Thursday, the Allegan High School event center will be used as a venue for a man that we believe spreads hatred and intolerance. Now, I won't read the rest of the letter, but at the bottom, uh, at the conclusion, he says, we are asking that you not allow a charlatan that promotes misinformation and division among fellow Americans to use any elegant school building, period. So all at once, because CARE thinks the person is uh, a charlatan, because CARE thinks a person is intolerant, they think that place should be, that event should be shut down. The event starts. Just before the event starts, the public school principal and superintendent uh, come to the police chief and says, we got some complaints about this. You know, Salim, Kamal Salim, there might be a $25 million uh, uh, fatwa on him, bounty to kill him. And um, it might be a threat. So they go to Kamal Salim, say, is that $25 million bounty on you? He said, that's a five-year-old uh, five rumor, never had a problem. In fact, the day before he spoke at a church in Grand Rapids, there was never a problem. Okay, and then after this uh, incident, he kept on speaking. At